Hello, I'm Vladimir. You're watching the BMRDOC channel. Today, we'll be activating SLI or speed limit information on BMW. So, let's go. First, what is SLI and why it's needed? SLI or speed limit information is an additional option available on BMWs. Unfortunately, it's not installable on BMWs from the factory, but if you don't have, you can either retrofit that with additional cameras and then activating that, or if you have all the prerequisites as that nice F16, for example, it has all the cameras, professional navigation system, everything pre-installed, we just need to activate that, and you'll see how to do that today. SLI is the system, it's a part of the driver convenience system. CAFAS camera that's installed in that car is able to detect pedestrians, uh, see the road if you're going off the lane or not, and also be able to track the road signs. When you're driving your hometown or uh, countryside, the places where you're aware of, actually that system is not so important because you know what regulations are present there. But when you are traveling in the Europe, US or wherever in the world, for example, traveling from Estonia to Spain, I have done that, that once. It was very such a beautiful, nice trip, driving in the Austrian Alps with your BMW, uh, cruising on the highway. But you have to know what speed tickets are there, uh, what are the limitations and what speeds are allowed. If you're driving in the place you haven't been before, most likely you don't know that all the regulations are present there. That's why it is very, very convenient if your car shows to you as a driver what limitation is present here so you know either to exceed the speed or not. Before we go exactly to the topic, how to activate SLI or speed limit information system on that specific BMW, if you haven't still subscribed to my channel, please do that. Also leave a comment and hit the like button if you do like my videos. Thank you, let's proceed. You might wonder, can you add that additional useful option to your BMW or not? I would divide all BMW into two categories. The first one, those who don't have all the prerequisites, for example, they don't have a CAFAS camera installed to the windshield, that's why that system cannot be activated straight away. A lot of retrofits are needed, installing the camera, additional CAFAS, ECU, making all the wirings and all that, a lot of different job. It's a bit more complicated process, I would like to make a video about that, if I have opportunity for that, and also if you have interest. And the second option, as we have on that BMW, it's F16 2014, it has professional navigation system, NVT ID3 installed, and actually it has already driver assistance included in that. So the camera is installed to the windshield. It has all the needed wirings, it has the CAFAS ECU. The only thing that's missing when that car was purchased, the previous owner uh, just didn't want or didn't know how to purchase or whatever reasons. Basically, he hasn't included that option into his. Uh, wish list. That's why that car came without that option. But that car has all the needed hardware present. That's why we need only to play with the software to activate that option. First, what do I mean by having all the needed hardware before activation? You can see it very easily. You go to the uh, front screen and you can see connected drive with the camera installed there. It means that car is equipped with a CAFAS, that's driver assistance camera and activation is needed only. We can also see that that car has professional navigation system. We'll just turn on the ignition and we can see that's NBT ID3. We'll go just to the version and see, okay, you can see that's next. It means it NBT ID3. There are different generations of driver assisting systems. There is CAFAS 1, 2 and 4. CAFAS 1 was installed on uh, F10s, pre-facelift, uh, F01s, that's 7 series. CAFAS 1 doesn't require any special code in order for that speed limit information to work, but that driving assistance system was kind of limited. It was able to show only road signs and basically that's it. In newer generation CAFAS 2 was introduced. CAFAS 2 ECU is able to assist driver in three different ways. One of them is speed limit information, the option we are going to code and activate today. 
you can see one of that system working over here. On our right, you can see over here, there's two yellow lines. It means that uh, line assistance is active. While you'll be driving, when your camera in your uh, windshield over here will detect that you're going off the lines, your steering wheel will start to vibrate a bit, uh, letting you know so you, that you're going off the line. So what's one, that's one example. But nowhere in our uh, cluster or even anywhere on our navigation system at the moment we cannot see any information about the road signs for example if you go to our vehicle into the settings over there we go instrument cluster display and here you can change what information is shown to the cluster and which one is not shown as you can see there is nothing that uh, tells about the uh, current uh, speed limit information or anything else that's why there is not a single place in that current car how we can activate it straight from the car. Additional coding where the ICs is needed. It will not work without that. Furthermore, remember I was telling about the CAFAS-1 system. There, special FSC code was not needed in order to activate that. In that car, it will be needed. What does it mean? If I'll add the special option that's called 8TH, that's speed limit information, I'll call all the necessary ECUs all the need information will appear in the car, but that function will be not working because it is protected with a special code. It's called FSC, or you can see it in German over here. Uh, that code uh, tells the car that that op option has been purchased in that car, and that can be deactivated. Uh, my pardon, that can, option can be activated. With those FSC codes on CAFES 2 ECU, there are two options. You can install either the fake ones or the original ones. Today I will use original code purchased from the BMW dealer. Why I'm not recommending using the fake FSC codes for CAFA system? Uh, the uh, reason is straightforward. The fake codes will be uh, seen by diagnostic software that's called ISTA and those codes will be rejected. So if you activate your CAFA system uh, uh, speed limit information in your CAFAs for a client with a fake codes and he goes to the dealer, BMW dealer will connect his, uh, their ICOM to the BMW, ISTA will scan the car, uh, ISTA will see that those codes are fake and it will just block it and that function will be not work in that car anymore until next activation. So it's kind of inconvenient. That's why I highly recommend to use uh, original OM codes for that function. Tools that will be needed today is ICOM Nana. Regular ICOM or INET cable can make all the same job perfectly fine. You'll also need a special laptop where there is Beamer dock sticker. Without that, it will not work. So let's go to car and launch our ACs and do the job. have any retrofits made before and it has all the needed hardware already installed. Today's process will be very straightforward. But always make sure before coding any car, any BMW, any whatever other brand, if there are any retrofits made, make sure you are aware of them. Otherwise, after VO coding, you will change the parameters inside the whole ECU according to the factory settings and you have messed up something, some functions of the car may not work properly afterwards. So let's turn on the ignition or the engine on, it doesn't matter. Let's connect the Icon Nano into the car, launch our ACs and proceed with the coding. Before connecting to the car, we have to start either ignition or turn the engine on. Because I'm inside the box, running the ign uh, engine on is not a good idea. I'll just turn on the ignition. And as you can see, the headlights are on. In order to save some, some power, you can just switch it to zero or to... Uh, side markers. Also what I recommend is to turn all the climate devices. If you have additional power supply hooked at the same time to the car, uh, no those actions are needed. First let's, let's choose the right vehicle because we're working in F16, that's X6, that's the same as F15. You have to know it's made on the F25 chassis so we have to choose uh, F20, F25 platform from here, as you can see F25. 
Yes, for the first time, it's hard when you're working with ACs. Uh, how? You're working in F16, you have to connect to F25 and so on. Uh, but there's a logic behind it, believe me. It's all based on the chassis or the platform, how the all vehicles are made. So what we need to do? Uh, first, we read out the vehicle order. Second, we read out all the ECUs. We can see we have connection with all the ECUs. We have to make sure we, are, we have all the issues present for that job. We'll need to code our cluster, we can see it. We need to code our head unit, we can also see it. And we also need the CAFAS 2 ECU and it's also present. That's a good sign. Let's save our vehicle order. Uh, I'll save it to the desktop. It will be named F16 FA uh, HTH. ATH. Uh, ATH is the proper option we need to add there. Let's just save it there. And yes, all right. Of course, we need to modify. The first step will be adding that new option to the car and introducing that to the car. So letting uh, the car know that now you have to have some new functionality. That option is called 8TH. If you decode that, you'll see that speed limit information. We have added that. Uh, all those essay codes are going in the alphabetical order. But you have to do it. The AC will make it by itself. Just press over here and apply changes and you can see the 8th jump to the right place. We need to calculate the vehicle order, uh, correction, the vehicle protocol. Done. If the calculation is not right, for example, we are trying to add whatever other option that's not compatible with that car, the calculation will fail. In our case, we have seen no other messages. It means we are good to go. And let's hit save. Now we can go back and press yes. And by that we are telling the ACs, yes, I wanna make coding process with the current FA that I have changed. Uh, we'll need to code the three ECUs, the cluster, the CAFAS 2 ECU and the head unit. Let's start with the CAFAS ECU. That's the camera assistance system that's pressed on that car. So right click and just press code. Make sure your ignition is still on and the coding process has started. During the coding process, some errors are totally fine in the car. Something will light up. The car will show some warning messages that says wrong, that's not right and so on. But it doesn't matter. The only thing that matters, if you can see in the end, report zero errors and everything is green. Green is good. And now let's go to the head unit and recode the whole head unit with that new option. I can already tell you ahead that just adding that option and coding will change nothing. Yes, the road sign indicator will appear in our cluster, but it will not work without FSC code. The head unit has rebooted. We can see zero errors and it's go. Uh, that's a good one. And the third issue we need to code is our cluster. Let's press code there. Coding the cluster is the most spectacular. It uh, turns off and shows all the different uh, things. It's okay. And we can see uh, no errors. It has been coded. Uh, that's good. So by now, what changes should we see in the car? If you go to our settings over the instrument cluster and you can see speed limit. There is a new tick there. Uh, you can tick it and it will, the head unit will uh, take the information out from the navigation maps, at least in Europe, it does that. In other parts of the world, it does not. On other parts of the world, all the information is read from the camera only. It doesn't take it from the head unit. But in Europe, yes, it works in that way. And now, if we start driving, we uh, should see some speed limit information in our cluster. The problem is that if I start driving, the road sign with the current speed should be present there, but you will see only three marks there as you can see on that picture it means that special code is not applied and that function is still blocked we have already code the vehicle to work with that option but the uh, system doesn't allow without that special code to work with that properly so next step will be inserting that special code into the CAFAS ECU in order to deactivate that we have to connect to that CAFAS ECU directly We'll just check one thing, uh, CAFAS 2 has extension 5AD, 
that will be needed soon. Go to comfort mode over there, FSC, and with FSC diagnostic address, insert 0x5d and click identify. You can see that's CAFAS 2 and you can check the FSC status. Okay, what we can see here. Uh, basically over here we can see the VIN code of the car and we can see that there are three different options. 126, that's 7A and we can see the FSC code is not available. And for that option and for that option, FSC code is available and FSC code is available. So what does all that mean? Remember that I told you that in CAFAS 2 ACU there are three maximum available options. So all those, I have made a small uh, cheat sheet for you. You can see the available apps in CAFAS 2. So if you can see the 7E over here, we can see 7E, it means speed limit information. That's exactly the function we're going to activate. And as you can see here, the FSC code is not available and we're going to insert that. So by that information, I can tell that that car has 190 and 191. It stands for frontal collision warning and pedestrian protection. So those functions are activated. Uh, and we have to activate the speed limit information and that car will be fully equipped with all possible options for that ECU. If you need more options, those are available. Or for example, on G-Series with when the CAFAS 4 ECU was introduced, there even more different retrofits are possible. So we'll upgrade that car to the maximum. For that, we have to go and there is special... I have to extract that. In that folder, uh, you can see that uh, FSC code purchased from the BMW dealer specially for that car. That code cannot be used on any other cars. It's made exactly for that car. And it's called 7E, as you can see over here. Uh, what else? Uh, what next should we do? We'll open that code. Well, let's go to our download folder. And we need to open that uh, FSC, uh, that current file here. We'll open it. We will remember the FA, the vehicle order. We have saved to the desktop with the 8th extension. We'll need that one to open. And after that, we have to press upgrade FSC. Never press upgrade uh, FSC, update FSC. Press always upgrade FSC. Uh, there is small difference in that. So press upgrade FSC. By pressing that button, we should import that FSC code in, into the CAFAS ACU and it should be accepted there. The ACS has written something, so what should we do next? We should press again, check FSC status, and it shows 7E is accepted. Why it doesn't show uh, all the rest of others? Uh, because we have selected uh, over here the new information. Uh, we can just uh, read out, delete that field over here, and that field over here, press identify and check the FSC status again. Now we can see that uh, 7E is accepted on all the rest are accepted as well. And because we have imported the original BMW activation code, yes, it costs uh, uh, more money than the fake ones, but that one will be not rejected. It will be never rejected. So basically that's factory level retrofit. And with that action, we have finished everything we needed to do with the ACs. Now we have to check if that function really works inside our car. So the moment of the truth, uh, let's start the engine. At the moment, we cannot see anything in sun, inside our cluster. And uh, that's because I have deactivated in the settings, instrument cluster, the speed limit information. If I'll make a tick here, you will instantly see a mark there. I'll turn the camera so you can see both of those. I'm activating those, pressing, and you can see the information has appeared. So in the current location, I'm stayed at the speed limit is 30 kilometers per hour. Now let's have a small joyride and confirm that that function works well. 
In Estonia, the speed limit in the city is 50 km per hour. In some places, it's limited to 30 km per hour. And on highway, you can drive up to 90 km per hour. So I'll just go to the closest highway and we should check if that parameter is changing or not. It will be changing because otherwise, if the code was rejected, we will see only three dashes like on that picture and you will see no numbers there, so I can already tell that system is working well. Remember, somewhere in the video, I also told that in Europe, the information for those road signs is not taken only from the camera, on the windshield, windshield but also from the navigation system. If you go to the map and see the map version, you can see uh, the newest map I installed uh, for that vehicle. You might wonder when the car takes information from the camera and when from the navigation map. It always reads out from the navigation map, at least in Europe. And if any other information is present from the camera, camera is priority number one. For example, uh, speed limitation on the highway in Estonia is 90 km per hour. You're driving, 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 and there is some road sign. For example, road works. Speed is limited to 30 km per hour. Can that information be found on navigation data? Absolutely no, because it's temporary sign only for road works. That's why activating the camera and reading information from the camera from the road signs is essential. Why the system is not working so well based only on the camera? Because during the winter time, you're driving, the windshield might be frozen with the uh, ice, snow, and all that kind of stuff. Also, uh, the road signs might be covered with uh, uh, some uh, some layer of snow. Uh, that's why those cannot be read out. And then information from the navigation system comes into play. That's why it's important not only to update, update the uh, software in all the European BMWs, but also the navigation data. demonstration about how the system work at the moment the speed limitation is 90 km per hour we are driving and we are approaching roundabout I know that in that place there will be a road sign that will show 70 and then 50 at the moment it's still 90 present here we are approaching to the road sign that will show uh, 70 we have crossed that and system goes to 70 it will be 50 soon, believe me, and we'll cross that and the system goes to 50. It works perfectly fine. And as soon as we'll leave the roundabout, we'll go again to the 90 km per hour area. Going off the roundabout, it's road sign 90 and the system will go to 90 again as you can see it has switched to 90 so the data is being taken out from both navigation system and the road signs themselves now you have seen how you can add the function to a BMW that was not present there from the factory in my opinion the speed limit information the ability for the vehicle to display that information to you as a driver is very very convenient if you have also head-up display present, that information will be projected to the head-up display. Unfortunately, that car is not equipped with the head-up display, but that function will work through your cluster to the head-up as well. So, if you find that video useful, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't done that yet. Also, leave a comment about possible future videos, all the topics that you're interested in, and hit the like button if you did like it. See you next time. Bye!